Not so long ago, it was enough for a car to get from A to B without bursting into flames. These days, buyers want to have their cake and to eat it, which is why car manufacturers like Mercedes have started offering crossovers, a kind of cheesy marketing term for a car that combines two elements into one. One such example is the Mercedes-Benz GLA, a premium hatchback with off-roading tendencies that, if you front up the cash, comes with four-wheel drive. It looks like a beefier, curvier A-Class, which makes sense because that's exactly what it is. But is it any good? It might not be a full-on SUV, but I think the GLA is suitably aggressive, especially with all the AMG extras that come as part of the night package. The interior is typically Mercedes-Benz. Everything feels as solid as pub furniture. Take the air vents, for example. The action to increase or decrease airflow is as smooth as butter. You also get sporty seats that are more comfortable than they look, and a meaty steering wheel. You also get a bit of red stitching and metal here and there that makes the interior feel just a bit more sporty. This particular review car is fitted with a panoramic roof, which sounds a lot better than it actually is. A thick pillar splits the glass into two sections, which makes the £900 optional extra questionable. Mercedes loses points for the somewhat confusing layout. There are levers everywhere. There's a lever for the gears, there's a lever for the indicators, and there's another lever for the Distronic Plus Adaptive Cruise Control, which we'll talk about later. The infotainment display isn't much better either. There seems to be more bezel than actual display. The resolution is low as well, so everything appears a little bit fuzzy. All is nearly forgiven when you listen to the optional Harman Kardon system, which kicks out a really impressive sound. Boy racers will definitely appreciate the bass, while everyone else with functional hearing will enjoy a balanced mix of lows, mids and highs. The Mercedes GLA benefits from having boxy proportions. You get storage spaces everywhere and a big enough boot for a monthly shop. It's taller than the Mercedes-Benz A-Class and there's plenty of space for people of height, whether in the back or in the front. The addition of formatic four-wheel drive does make you feel safe and cosy in the rain and you benefit from better traction at all times. But even with a hill start hold mode, slightly increased road height and hill descent control, the GLA feels more hatchback than off-roader. This GLA 220 offers plenty of torque and go when you want it to. Unfortunately, there is some reluctance to go initially and it takes a second or so for the turbo to wind up. In stop and start situations, this initial weight can prove very tiresome. The engine noise isn't very refined when you start up and when you're pushing it, but it does settle down when you're cruising along. The ride is quite firm in this AMG spec, especially with the 19-inch AMG alloys and the run-flat rubbers. But to be honest, it isn't bad enough that it shakes you to bits. It is definitely not as rock hard as the A-Class. The steering is light and precise, but it is somewhat limited in its ability to provide feedback. Still, there is more than enough grip for normal use. A real standout feature of the GLA is the Distronic Plus Adaptive Cruise Control, which you can turn on with one of the levers somewhere down here. Basically, this lets you follow the car in front automatically, slowing down and speeding up as necessary. Better still, it will work to a complete standstill and all the way up to motorway speeds. Once it's on, you only need to worry about the steering. The GL8 is a touch heavier and less agile than the A-Class, but I think that's a worthwhile trade-off. It has a kind of rugged charm about it. I don't think I will ever need the extra clearance and four-wheel drive when parking in an NCP, but I like to know it's there. Versatility is never a bad thing. Mercedes cars are supposed to feel premium, and this delivers. I can forgive a few foibles because the overall experience is one of comfort and luxury. Hell, it even drives itself, which is the stuff of films like iRobot. So the question is, should you buy this car? If you're happy paying extra for the badge and the build quality, and you want to do a bit of off-roading from time to time, then I really do think this car ticks all the boxes. Plus, it looks a whole lot better than its rival, the BMW X1. Although, to be fair, that really isn't saying much. This is the Lotus Challenge. In fact, if I was to travel on a plane, I probably wouldn't want to get out of the Range Rover Sport. I just want to drive it straight onto the plane and up into business. That car has cooked the steak. <laughs> that is, I'm really surprised. I honestly thought this is going to be, we'll do it and it'll be like, yeah, we'll yeah, just yeah. chew it.